Well, my next job in getting my 2A back together is to fit the new headlights. And I've decided to fit relays for the headlight circuit. When series Land Rovers were first made, the headlamps didn't pull as much current as they do now. 60 watts per headlight is 120 divided by 12 volts. Um, gives you 10 amps so typically to give yourself a bit of leeway but still catch any problems quickly a 15 amp fuse in the headlamp circuit is a good idea and wiring that can take 15 amps of course it's no good having a short somewhere if your wire melts before the fuse blows Having a lot of current go through the light switch on the dash and your foot switch for main beam and dip, if you have one of those, or even through your, your indicator stalk if that's where you've got light controls, can be problematic. Lots of series owners will tell you about having switches burn out, um, but certainly not having a fuse anywhere in that circuit is not a great idea with these older vehicles. I'm quite new to relays, I've, I mean these are the first relays I'll actually fit myself and I've never had to do anything with them before. They are basically switches. There are different styles of relay for combinations of you know, you've got single pole, double throw, double pole, double throw, and so on, just as with switches, but a typical four pin automotive relay, like this one, which is also fused. You'll have two, what they call normally open contacts, which in this case is 30 and 87. They're called normally open because they are not normally connected. So right now, if I did a continuity test with the multimeter, they would not, there'd be infinite resistance. There's, there's no way a current can flow between those two pins, 30 and 87, which are visible down here. There's eight, it's upside down, but there's 87 and there's 30. So as it stands, if I have a power feed coming in and I'm hoping that it will run out to my headlights, nothing's gonna light up until I somehow bridge that gap inside the relay, which is that switch in the diagram, which is normally open. The numbers are, they probably seem arbitrary, but they, they're just part of the standard that defines how relays should work. And then there's two normally closed contacts, 85 and 86, here and here, they are connected. via a very small coil. Now experts might correct me and different relays are probably made differently but the general idea here is if you pass even a tiny current through pins 85 and 86 this coil, the current flowing through it creates a magnetic force which pulls this armature towards it and shuts that switch. So then a much larger current can run through 30 to 87. So it's like a switch, but it's not one you pull with your finger. It's a switch that you close by passing a tiny current through pins 85 and 86. So the idea is that your headlight switch is in the circuit that when you turn your light switch on, current flows along your you know, your blue-white wire if you're on main, or your blue-red if you're on dip. Let's say you're on main beam, along the blue-white wire to this relay, which will be for main beam. And it's a small current, so it's not going to um, make your light switch hot or burn out or anything. It's a tiny current. It's just enough to go through this coil and pull this switch shut. Then your power feed that's coming in maybe from your starter solenoid on a brown wire 
can flow over that closed gap and run off up the blue white wire to your headlamp then your headlamp actually comes on but that that much larger current for your two main beam headlamps right 10 amps that's not going through your light switch your light switch is part of this circuit which you've used to activate that coil and this circuit is completely alone and if there's any problems this fuse blows um, so that's that's the print that's why people fit relays for their headlights and other large large current circuits the idea is that you use a really small current to control a much larger one and ideally you have all your your instruments and your switches on this low current circuit and then this big current circuit is fused and probably has thick wiring and so on so the idea is to fit one of these to control the main beam for the headlamps and then I'll have a second relay close by for the dipped beam so I've wired up the main beam relay now the brown wire is from the start of solenoid so the pin the power goes into on the brown wire it's a normally open contact and when that switch is closed by the headlight main beam circuit from the light switch then switch is closed and then current can flow on my blue white main beam wire over to my headlights both headlights so there'll be a, a double connector either near the relay or underneath the bonnet latch behind the grille which is where I've got connectors to break off the lighting harness from the other wing if I want to remove the wing easily. So all that remains now is the main beam circuit. I've got my light switched on on main beam at the moment. On that normally closed pin input there, I just have to earth this one to get my headlight on. So let's earth that and take a look. I'm just going to use a quick test cable. And so I've got a test lead on the battery earth post. Let's um, let's let's switch the relay on. And there we go. So that's my main beam. And then if we break that circuit by turning main beam off or the lights off, then there'll be no voltage coming across the blue white wire have the same effect as just breaking that circuit and then the light goes out because those two normally open contact pins are no longer connected. So that appears to be working. I will now set up my dip relay and then I'll get those two relays installed down there, tidy up all my connections and I'll, I'll give you a look when they're installed and finished. Well, the relays are in now, and they're tucked away down there, both fused. With a full screen video, it might look like there's a lot of wiring, but there's nothing there that, uh, that is not needed. Just need to shrink that down, that's the headlamp harness. Got some. Uh, Loom mesh, I think it's called, to keep all the wires tidy down that side. It's a lot better than it was. Lighting's not very good tonight because I'm out in the garage. These two cables coming off the battery up to the dasher for electric heaters. I need a proper heater at some point, but they might be useful in the winter. So, yes, that's where I've put my relays. I don't think that small amount of wiring there is going to get in my way and I don't think the relays will be in my way either. The horn is going to go back on here 
and I can get the battery tray, retainer tray anyway, in and out no problem. So see how that goes for a position. It's good to have them as near the headlamps as possible. Um, yeah, that's about it really. Most of this job is actually tidying up wiring and getting everything neat and sort of taped away. Um, but we're done now, on to the next job. Alright, so I hope this was helpful. Anyone out there looking to fit relays for the first time, see you soon.